UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, who has been meeting with states in the South Pacific to raise awareness of climate change issues, said Pacific Islanders need help coping with the effects of nuclear testing. It turns out that the nuclear waste repository on Runan Island has started to crack, a long time ago, in fact. It has become vulnerable, which means that there is a possibility of contamination of Pacific waters. How did the nuclear waste repository end up in the Pacific Ocean? In fact, the Pacific Islands used to be a favorite place to test nuclear weapons. Between 1946 and 1958, the United States tested 67 nuclear weapons on Bikini and Iniwatak Atolls, part of the Marshall Islands. The most powerful explosion took place in 1954. The Castle Bravo test brought the power of the 1,000 bombs that exploded over Hiroshima to Bikini Atoll. The testers did not expect a 15-megaton explosion, the area of radioactive contamination was too large. This was only the 12th of all the atoll tests. For years and 55 more explosions later, the U.S. stopped testing nuclear bombs, but no one cleaned up the radioactive debris until 1977. When the time did come to collect the waste, a 100-meter crater on Runet Island was chosen as the burial site. It had, of course, been left there after one of the tests. For 1,000 military personnel collected 73,000 cubic meters of radioactive waste, just the topsoil, into the crater. The crater was covered with a giant concrete dome 46 centimeters thick. The operation took three years and $218 million. The dome was originally built as a temporary dome. It was supposed to last until something better, such as a new sarcophagus over the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, could be found, although without the containment the reactor cannot be considered completely isolated from the environment. But nothing is more permanent than the temporary. The dome over the crater of Runet Island has been sealing off the waste for 42 years. What's under the dome? Under the dome is everything that was. All categories of waste were piled in the same pit. Even plutonium-239, one of the most toxic substances in the world. It has a half-life of 24,000 years. Now, high-level radioactive waste, RW, is sorted into categories, each of which has specific disposal conditions. RW is not spent nuclear fuel, SNF, but anything that does not pass the Geiger counter test, soil, clothing, equipment, and SNF reprocessing waste, anything that cannot be reused. Why has the dome become a threat? Reports that the dome was cracking started appearing a long time ago. The last time it was mentioned was in 2015. The U.S. Department of Energy insisted at the time that the cracks were the result of drying and shrinkage and that they posed no threat. Four years later, it is still cracking and threatening the environment of the Pacific Ocean. In addition to the cracks, everyone is concerned about the bottom of the vault, permeable soil. The crater was not leveled and the bottom was not isolated before throwing tons of waste in there. This means that groundwater and sea tides may well flow under the dome. Experts don't even doubt that the repository has been leaking for a long time. In 2014, traces of plutonium-239 were discovered in the South China Sea off the coast of Guangdong province, scientists were able to trace how the substance traveled through ocean currents. The Marshall Islands authorities will not be able to repair the radioactive waste repository on their own if only because the Republic has no money or technology to do so. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Write in the comments about what else interesting you can tell about this video. See you in the new video.